numbers, a water rate study. And that's going to look at the true cost of providing the service. And that's what rates are based on. They're based on the true cost of providing the service. Which means, if the true cost shows that our revenues are not meeting our cost for providing water services, we have to adjust that. It also means that if we've got about $500,000, $600,000 in delinquent water bills, we have to do something about that too, because that drives the cost up. And guess who pays for the deficit between the revenues and expenditures for those delinquencies? So we're going to have to look at those things, and we're going to have to be better prepared to enforce our ordinances, which provide for the cost of, in this particular case, a business to provide the services and making sure that everyone pays and that we do not find ourselves in a situation uh, like I heard recently in Detroit, uh, where there's just an ungodly uh, amount of delinquencies in the water bills, you know, some $200 million, or if I'm not uh, mistaken, the number. But the number is not important. True, it matters. What's important is that the system is designed to serve its people for a cost, and if that is askew in any way, then that cost is askew. So we have to look at that. And we're going to be very aggressive about identifying where those issues are. In fact, I will be probably adding that to my list of things to brief the public on sometime this week as we look at issues going forward. And I'm excited about the work that has gone into preparing the city of Flint to uh, eliminate its dependence on the, uh, the Detroit Water and Sewer Department for its water. That's a major step, a huge step in the right direction because it now gives you the opportunity to control, better control the cost. And with all the other factors to be considered in that, I would think that from a good management standpoint, you would want to have control of that. So we'll talk more about that when the uh, report is finalized. I will not be releasing the report until it is final. Uh, but we're encouraged by the data, and we will use that data to make decisions going forward regarding the governance of the water system. So just in summary, these seven points are good management practices that I think the city will be stronger for and will certainly be on a path as we were in 2004 when we eliminated the first uh, structural deficit towards sustaining itself. But that's only the beginning. That's not the end of the story. You know, the story doesn't end there, and so we can't stop there. We have to continue to work at making sure we're doing what's best for the city of Flint post-emergency. And if I could just editorialize in a little bit, my role as an emergency manager is temporary. You all know that. I know that. The state knows that. But whether or not you benefit from having the opportunity to go in and do the things that you need to do to reduce the cost and to put the city back on solid financial footing is entirely up to you. Um, and I think we can do that. I think we can get there. Uh, if there's any doubt in your mind about how best to get there, and if I haven't convinced you that for now and starting out, this is, in my opinion, a good way to get there, I'm more than happy to listen to any alternative options. But for now, in my role, it's important for me to be able to tell the state that I laid out a plan to you for transition. And until that plan is implemented, and as you can see, most of these things we've already been working on since 2011. Till we get there, then we're not prepared to do that. Some people have asked me in various circles, uh, since I've re-engaged the council and the mayor into the work of the city, is when will the emergency be over? You know, when will you turn it back over to the city? Well, my response has been when the job is done. And we still have work to do. You heard the mayor and his understanding of what it is we're trying to do. So now I ask you to be a partner with me and the mayor in getting this work done. With that, I'll take any questions, yeah. Thank you. Sir, with Councilman Mays first. Councilman Mays. Mr. President, is this under the five-minute rule? Oh, Mr. Early. See, Mr. Early, each time I've been at council meetings, I don't know if it's each time, but if I may editorialize a little bit on the front end, you've had special privilege. And in most cases, it's been more than five minutes. But if you transition in the council to self-government, 
I was appalled when I read about emergency manager eight because you got nine grown people and you got a chairperson who should know how to chair a meeting. It ain't just the new people that have to learn. It's some of the old ones too. And so I was looking forward to old and new people learning the real way to conduct a meeting politely and professionally under Robert's Rules of Order. So I want you to know, even though I was not a sitting council member, I traveled to Lansing with George Peck. He was an attorney for Mayor Don Williamson. I ran Don Williamson's part of his campaign in 2003-2004. I sat with treasurers and governors running from Flint to Detroit to get Flint out. The attorney was George Pett. The mayor was Don Williamson. So I didn't have to be sitting in a seat, as you alluded, alluded to Mr. Kincaid, to play a role in the middle of transition in the south of an emergency manager situation. Now to communicate more directly to the seven-point plan, believe me, you sent us, and I didn't go kicking, I volunteered to go to training in Frankenmuth, and it was conducted by the Michigan Municipal League. The Michigan Municipal League was in Lansing. Mr. Kincaid and Walling was there, I think, last week. And they said, and then Mr. Kincaid articulated after some of us, I call us activists. I learn a lot from Claire McClendon, Naira Sharif, Alex um, Gibbs, and others. I call us activists. We repealed Public Act 4 with signatures and votes. And then in the lame duck session, the Republicans put in 436, what we're talking about now. 436 give more, an op more than one option. They give more than one option. They give an option that I discussed with you last week in your office called a neutral facilitator. After 18 months, the council by resolution of mayor, just as you want this resolution passed, can vote the emergency manager out. And then within seven days, interested parties can send letters and we can work our own problems out. I don't know what my colleagues going to do. I don't even know if any of them other than me took you up on your opportunity to meet and discuss this privately. But remember, I'm a person who liked to discuss it not only privately as I did with you. I thought it would take 15 minutes. We would have for an hour and a half. But I like to discuss it open about an hour and 15 minutes. I like to discuss it openly and honestly like we did with each other in front of the public. I like open, honest, and transparent government. And I said to you then, and I'll say to you publicly in my elected seat, the point number three for one is a game breaker for me. I cannot vote to support that governance committee because the Michigan Municipal League taught us when you had us in training over at Mott College, the documents I read that was compiled, whether the clerk's office put them together or whether you knew it, home rule, state law says to me that no elected official, Walling, nor my colleague Councilman Nolan should be sitting on a charter revision committee. I believe in law. I took an oath of office to uphold the Constitution, the laws of the state of Michigan, so forth and so on. So I cannot condone elected officials behind closed doors. I had people in the meeting, Mr. Kurt say if it's an open meeting to deal with charter revisions, I won't be on it. You should have told him to go home. That's what I'd have did. He don't, who cares if you own it? The reading that I understand says that a charter revision committee, which revision is major amendments, major changes, and amendments is more minor. You're talking about major changes to the charter. And I keep hearing the politics of it to be a, not a strong mayor form of government, but a manager form, like back when McCree was here. And then I keep hearing shrinking council from nine to seven. I serve as 10 to 15,000 people now dealing with potholes, murders, 
lack of police service, um, grass cutting, abandoned houses, and I'm probably the only one here five days of a week regularly, and it's a lot for me, particularly when we can't communicate because of your orders. If you was to truly convince me, yeah, you can smile, but I'm there to tell you, you know I talk candidly, Mr. Early. You say this is something that the council should vote on for you to recommend that you leave and it be turned over to us. I've said it, and since you smile, we'll be candid. If I was making 7000 or so every two weeks, I wouldn't be in a hurry to leave. I said I'd give my girlfriend 3000 put 2000 or so in the bank and might go to the casino. You put it in the order. The point is this. I make $215 every two weeks. Everybody in Flint who's watched me know that I've struggled hard to get to sit in this seat. I'm a sincere guy. My father was Pastor Mays. I'm a member at Shiloh. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I've cited from this seat Proverbs, the third chapter, more than one time. Fifth and sixth verse. Trust in God with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he shall direct thy path. So people can laugh, they can joke, and when I had a misfortune, believe me, I'm as straight as an arrow, I've been baptized. The point is this, I didn't interrupt you, okay. but the seven-point plan in governance. Yes, I know you want to chair the meeting and keep it on track, and you're appealing to the chair, and he'll probably follow your lead because they're scared if they don't. What will you do, lock us out of City Hall? My point is this, I am following it. You editorialized at the end, I did at the beginning, and I can do it my way. The problem is when you treat us less than dignified leaders, because we didn't interrupt you. It's a lot of times I didn't like what you said, but I didn't direct the chair, I didn't interrupt you. Courtesy and etiquette mean something. I know it's nine of us and one of you. And you believe that if I talk long, they're going to talk long. What I've experienced so far is when I talk long, some of them pass, have nothing to say, and then some of them say theirs in three, four minutes. So the bottom line is this. Wallen shouldn't be on that committee to revise the charter, and Nolan wouldn't either. You try to appoint me as an elected official, and I know what the law say. I can't accept it. You've got the chairman of the planning commission on there appointed and elected people according to the Home Rule Act. Nobody had to believe me, read it. It tells you they shouldn't be on there. So even though you can come in and replace the mayor and the council, because that's what 436 say, I'm waiting on a lawsuit to see if it's unconstitutional. While we wait on the lawsuit and people do their dirt, for corporate America, and I say corporate America because I've seen no deficit elimination. When you look at point number one, you want us to prove a deficit elimination plan and the governor ain't. I know what you're saying. You're saying just approve the concept of a deficit elimination plan and you'll see it later. Believe me, Mr. Early, the first definition, the deficit elimination plan used the water rates to pay back. Until I met with you, I found out now it's a plan that don't <coughs> include using the water bill money to pay it back. Show me the plan. What's wrong with postponing this? Is it time sensitive? Do it have to be passed today? Can we have more open dialogue? Because remember, you appeal into the chair to rush me. You want me to make a decision in front of the public real quick and be quiet. Well, let me say this. Under Robert's rules of order, not emergency manager order number eight, I could put a motion on the floor to postpone this to the next meeting. You let us meet once a month. Maybe we'll have a special meeting in the middle of the month just for this. The point is this. My colleagues, you said it when you referred to point six. You think Josh Freeman singled him out. You know why? Because, because he meets with y'all behind closed doors. And then when we come to meetings, he abruptly and wrongfully adjourns them and call our talking. I won't repeat it. It made headlines. I thought it was outrageous to 
refer to one of the colleagues talking like me Councilman as Mays. a sex act. Councilman Mays, could, could you be specific to the seven-point plan? I am being no, specific. No, I've talked. No, well, I'm, I'm going to rule you out of order, Mr. Mays. I'm you, asking you to be specific to the seven-point plan. You can rule me out of order, if, but I hope you don't, because anybody with ears heard me talk about the governance committee, and then I just went to the five-year, the six, the number six, when he referred to Josh Freeman and you. Being I was referring to that. And my point specifically is you got to quit meeting behind closed doors with just a handful. Do you know Mr. Kincaid is the president and I ain't got a phone call from him and been elected since Mr. November? Mays, Mr. Mays, you're, you're out of order now. Oh, and, you think? And I'm, I'm asking you, you're out of order. I'm out of order because I'm stating the facts you're, about the communication. Mr. Mays? Yes. Yeah. You're out of order. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Go ahead. Point okay, of order. I appeal the decision of the chair under is, Robert's rules. Is there support from my colleagues? You don't need support to appeal the decision of the chair. The vice chair takes over, and then you say your point why I'm out of order, and I say my point. If you want to play Robert's rules, I Mr. appeal Mays, the decision I'm of the chair. I'm not going to argue with you. It's not an uh, argument. It's yes. Robert's rules. The emergency manager has implemented under the emergency law, the ability for me to... Point of order. You point ruled me out of order. order. I appealed the decision of the chair. The order Mr. of business is the appeal of the decision Mr. of the Major, chair. Mr. Mays, you're out of order. Any more outbursts, I'm going to... You out of order. You out of order. If oh, I appeal the decision of, of the chair... You are out of order. Well, that's why I appealed the decision of the chair. I was in order. I had the floor, and you interrupted me. We're moving on, Mr. Mays. We'll move on. God bless you. Thank you. Is there any other council people, persons, that would like to ask a question to Mr. Early? Yes. Councilman uh, Neely. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me start over here, work my <coughs> way around. Councilperson Poplar? I'm fine. Thank you. Councilman um, Neely. I just want to make I mean, one. Councilman I just want to make one, um, one quick, quick statement. Um, I do sit on that Blue Ribbon Committee. Um, um, committee, That is not a charter revision committee. Um, some questions came up about that, and we've had some conversations, but nothing is etched in stone about um, any charter revisions taking place. It's some other discussions that are taking place. Um, I don't know where people are getting that it's just a charter revision because that is not the case. It's 21 other people that sat on that. Um, no, it's, I mean, it's 23. It's tw 23. 23 other people that sit on that, um, that committee. And in the near future, it's going to be open. And everything that has been discussed in this Blue Ribbon Committee will be for the public to digest and for the council to digest. But this is not a charter revision committee because I would not be sitting on it if it was just a charter revision committee. Anything related to the charter, we know that it has to go before the people. And the people are going to have to make that decision on that. So this is not a charter revision committee that I sit on. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Nolan. Uh, Councilman Freeman. Councilman Davis. Uh, Mr. Early, I see in here when you had made a statement in your editing about um, Being, I'm going to paraphrase it because you said a lot, but it was about being equal with the citizens of our state. You say that the water is a business, and I understand it is a business, but now that we're going back to our own sources, which is the river, I think that it is incumbent upon us to find some means or some way to bring relief to our residents in this city because... Well, I, I'm, 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 I'm being honest, is if it's a business and we have clients, a business is only as strong as its clients. <clears throat> and when our citizens leave this city, they take their taxes and they probably take their income and their property taxes with them, and we lose a great client. I think for these three years, and I say I think until you say the data comes out, that we have to find some sound solution to the outcry of the citizens in this city because that's the biggest outcry. It's like a disease that has no cure. 
and only option or alternative that some of our residents have is just to leave. And that's something we cannot afford. It was a time when you said that our water supply function and it supplied 200,000 people. We have half of that amount of people. And the understanding I got from that is that the money that we're going to use in the long haul in dealing with this river is that we're going to use it for infrastructure and upgrading the pipe system or the, 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 uh, the water plant and make it sustainable for the next 50 years. But this is the same thing that we state when we talk about the Kerry Gandhi, that we're going to do that as well from paying $12 million to Detroit to make city coming down to $6.2 million, which means we have surplus. And we're going to use that extra for that, or we're going to make a vote, or however we're going to do it. That's some of the ideas that's been thrown up of what we're going to do with it. But for these three years, I think that it would be actual, uh, it would be just and reasonable, just for these three years. And then we deal with that during time of the Kerry Gandhi to try to lower, either lower the water, rate, the water rates or remove it. Maybe you can articulate on that yourself, sir. Well, my only response to that, Councilman, would be <clears throat> let's get the data back so that you have a complete understanding of what it is we're measuring, of what it costs to operate the system, and then we can go from there. Okay. But I can tell you right now, the decision to go to Karagandi versus staying with Detroit gives us the better handle on managing those costs. But to stand here and tell you that means we can reduce the cost and still maintain the system, I'm not prepared to tell you that. I understand the, I understand the, uh, the urgency and will certainly uh, make sure that that information is well disseminated once it is final. Uh, and we will take a very close look at that. I understand that. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Neely? Yes. Darnell, um, <clears throat> I have a couple questions about the seven-point plan and also the timeliness of it. Is it, that's, is it imperative that we <clears throat> Excuse me, is it imperative that we do complete this action tonight? Because I do have questions, and I'm, I'm not for sure if this, is, um, this form is going to allow us to have that type of dialogue for some of the points. Uh, it's seven points in the whole plan, and I, I have great concerns with a few of, the, few of them. Uh, point number three, the governance piece. I, I do not trust the process. I, I just can't trust the process with 23 individuals in a non-transparent form talking about the governance of a city that some of them don't even reside in, for one. Uh, and I would like to have more dialogue with you about that and have a discussion with you about that. Um, and so my question in this transition piece, with the seven points that you say you want to present to the state so we can move forward, does this at any time or any way enable us from, to, um, to operate with the, the plans in 436 to ask you to leave after 18 months? Does it tie, tie our hands? from any other options that 436 provides us? This does not impede the council's ability to do anything under 436. In my opinion, it helps the council by giving it a focused uh, look at and direction on the things that need to happen in order for me to recommend that a transition advisory board be implemented. All too often what happens in cases like this is that when you get down to the point where you've satisfy the deficit elimination plan process, or at least have a close enough feel for how that might look, then you re-engage and then you try to turn it back over to the elected officials. And that doesn't work well. So the conversations that we've been having ever since the first of the year when I brought this to you uh, were designed to set the stage for these issues that now if you pass the resolution, become a guideline, nothing more than that. When a transition advisory board is in place, they will get the seven-point transition plan with the objectives completed. You ask if there's urgency, there is urgency. And the urgency is predicated on the fact that uh, we're right in the middle of our budget process. We're starting to look at what it's going to take to balance our budget. We still have a 12.9 million dollar budget deficit. There's no reason to delay this uh, because the information that you just heard here is just not accurate. This is not a charter revision group. This is not something that has been uh, decided behind closed doors. The process is just beginning. 
We need to be able to tell the state, I need to be able to tell the state, that the city of Flint is working towards a plan to bring itself out of the emergency, uh, uh, 436 financial emergency. The longer we delay that, the more difficult it's going to become. There are some issues here, I think, long term, that certainly need your support. They needed it a long time ago in terms of uh, adjusting some of the things that have been happening. The other alternative was the emergency manager just did it and didn't say anything to you about it, okay? I, being a city manager, know that perhaps that's good in the short term, but I'm thinking long term. And in order for it to be successful long term, in order for it to move forward and keep the city from going back, we've got to get on the same page. Now, there's nothing magical about what I have here. And, you know, I ask each and every one of you, if you had questions, to get in touch with me. I mean, we've been talking about this. This isn't the first time you've had it. So I would urge you to pass the plan. Let's work on the plan together. And the issues, whether they're one point or two points, I guarantee you will not be the final determining arbiter of whether or not the city comes out of financial emergency, but it will certainly help in making that determination when we've been working on these things all the time, all of the stuff we've been working on. So I guess the answer to your question is that, you know, I, I think the council and the mayor and the emergency manager need to get together and say this is what we're going to do. You heard from the mayor. I've been working on it since January. I spoke to you about it in one of our earlier meetings. You've had ample time to, you know, to, to ask the questions. I mean, this, there's nothing about it going forward that will pre pre preclude you from making whatever decisions you need to make about 436 when the time comes. Yeah, and Mr. Early, my, my comfort level is, is not based upon what I heard here tonight, spoken here tonight. And I do appreciate the opportunity to meet with you, and I do appreciate the opportunity to have an invitation to have dialogue about this, but these points was not emailed to, to me. I think I got it maybe Thursday or Friday of last week. Thursday or Friday of last week, Darnell. That's when we got it, and, and these descriptions are very anemic when we talk about detail. So I have not had opportunity to discuss these, the seven-point plan in total with you um, based upon what was submitted. Now, I don't know when this was submitted to our office, but I guess we, 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 we sent it out Thursday. Th th Thursday of last week, Darnell. Thursday of last week when we got this. So you have nine council people that you gave an invitation to have a dialogue with you, and we received this Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. That gives us Friday. Mm -hmm. we, we don't work on weekends yeah. unless we're fixing water main breaks. Yeah. Um, so. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, so I mean, re the reality of it is that I, I have, I'm not in disagreement with all seven points of, of your plan. I have concerns with a few of the points. And so I'm just asking, and my question was just clear and concise about the urgency of this. We only meet once a month. We got this Thursday. You extended the invitation for us to have a dialogue with you last month, but it took a long period of time before it was submitted to us for us to even review. And so my question is about the urgency of it. I'm very concerned about point number three. You said that uh, point number three is not a mandate of Public Act 436 in your presentation. Yeah, it's not. Okay, so if it's not a mandate, do, can, we, can we break the seven points down and vote on them separately? No, no. I would not recommend you do that. Okay. Well, I, would not, I would not recommend you do that. Well, I understand that. And I, hear you, I heard you and somebody else say the same thing. But I'm concerned about that. And also, as we talk about the water rate study, the water rate study um, has been a very elusive to council members. The mayor may have seen it. Well, I'm just saying, I don't know. The study is not complete, councilman. I understand the study is not complete. The staff has reviewed it with the consultant, and that's as far as it's gone. Okay. But in making our determination moving forward, as Councilman Davis said, we're making determinations and decisions based upon information that we just do not have. And if, before I make a decision, it's not based upon all what I hear here, but I do like to take a little bit of time just to review it and look at it and may have a dialogue. And I appreciate you uh, when we schedule a meeting, you know, we, we talk about some of these things, but we have not had the opportunity to discuss the seven-point plan in total. Well, I, see, I would disagree with that, Councilman. We've talked about this uh, long before last Thursday. We've talked about it. I came before you 
I laid it out. It's been in the media. At that time, I even asked you to get in touch with me if you wanted to talk about it because, as you recall, at that meeting,